Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. One of those friends, and I'm Link, the oh, other oh, one of those friends. You just added something <laughs> new, come on, man. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we got a lot to catch up on, my friend, because we're both fresh out of the oven of uh, wedding anniversary celebrations and uh, also like my extended birthday celebration. Oh, that's what you call it? Which, I'm, yeah, I just <coughs> bless you. Sorry, I just scat you. I think somebody put some metal shavings in my coffee. Don't question it. <laughs> they taste great, Red. Oh. You'll love them once they take effect. The funny thing is, you gave me this mug, and you yeah. ne- here's the thing, you've hey, never done just, that. Just I was like, keep, just indulge. I said, I gotta make you myself a coffee, and then out of nowhere, like you, I, I turn around and you're like, hey, use this mug, and you've never in the history of our 35, eight, I don't know how long it's been, to your friendship, you offered me a mug, and now two sips in, I'm choking on metal shavings. Well, they're not metal shavings. What is it? What'd you do to my Th- coffee? They will dissolve eventually <laughs> oh, uh, in your in your GI is tract. It bark. Just go with it. Ugh, I'm trying to. I just couldn't even speak. Yeah, I'm just back go from with it. T- my anniversary. May not be as many years as yours, but it's more significant because it was 20 years, and yours was 21 years. You've already done 20 years, <laughs> right? Uh, and so I spent a week, a week. And, and the reason we went for a week is because Jesse and I had been talking for 10 years about our 20 year anniversary and how it was gonna be in Italy. Italy. We're like so excited about Italy. Good luck with that. And of course, uh, something called COVID happened and travel is uh, hampered. And so we just went to Big Sur, which let me just say. Just went to Big Sur. Big Sur made me better than Italy. I it's don't know, not, I haven't been is, to Italy. It's not called Little Sur, it's called Big for a reason, man. Right. It's, it's living large. So I had a lot of things happen the, that we'll get into. I would not call it Northern, Cal- Central, Central to, Coast, the Central, Central Coast. Coast of California. Uh, you got redwood trees and forests going, oh, I'll tell you going all right, about it. right to the cliff's edge. I'll I've only driven through it. that. I'm freaking jealous, a little angry. Good. Um, oh yeah, because you're trying to kill, is that why you're trying to kill me? <clears throat> am, I gonna, am I going to die before the end of this podcast? No. Good, as um, long as I make it through this. One last release. It's just gonna be for me. Your death is just gonna be for me, it's not gonna be monetized. What if I did die before the next podcast? Would you post this one and ironically it'd be like, we joked about him dying at the beginning of this. Yes, I would have to, Yeah, I would have to. And then, you know, I got plenty to say. So I could probably just keep this going. <laughs> <laughs> Where one lifelong friend talks to himself for, for a, a long, long time. time. Wow, that's a good idea. <laughs> Maybe we just start two podcasts. Maybe we just split and go to, with two podcasts. I mean, two lifelong friends talk to themselves for a long time. I'm sure there's a codependency to our relationship. I just kind of avoid knowing what that term means because I don't wanna. You haven't I, been I, in therapy long enough. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, but yeah, I don't. It, I don't introduce myself to strangers as a lifelong friend to someone who you're not currently meeting. Yeah, right. I've I've never done that. Yeah, who, who I'm currently murdering <laughs> on a podcast <laughs> for Christy and our twentieth anniversary last year. Do you know what I made plans for us to do? Go to Big Sur. Go to freaking Big Sur. Yeah, but you were in the you were in the because, thick of the pandemic, and it was um, yeah, it was. I, it was one of those times when I thought I might still be able to go because it was in the woods and we'd be isolated, but it was so early that I had to, we had to cancel the thing entirely. And then so much has been up in the air, I did not rebook it until I heard that you were going to Big Sur. And then I'm like, well shit, I'm not going to Big Sur the same week. And actually, yeah, good. we didn't go anywhere for a whole week because of like schooling logistics and some factors at our home. We ended up saying, okay, you know what? We're just gonna plan a weekend away. We're gonna. Christy was eyeing this like really nice hotel that had all this really f- uh, fancy decor all over the place. It's like um, a new design for an and an, 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 a new hotel. Okay, it's the Kelly Wurstler Hotel. Uh, that name does seem like the one that she was telling. I just me know about. that because my wife is a designer. It was super cool. So we just stayed there, like basically two days, two nights. Well, almost three days, two nights. And we had just like, just dedicated time together at this hotel, and I'm going to tell you about it. Um, we have a couple. We have a couple also, of little. There's a couple of things that we want to cover before we get any further. Oh, some we logistics. Forget. Logistics. Uh, one thing is we're about to take a break 
Now you remember, you're supposed to remember the details of this break, so why don't you explain well, that? Well, um, today we're talking about our trips. Next episode, we are going to be unveiling the results of the survey that we gave to our wives. We have not we have not read those ahead of time. We're gonna process that next week on the show. Um, almost a year ago, we gave a survey to our kids and got yeah. their like just unfettered feedback. So now, you know, after our anniversary celebrations, maybe we buttered them up enough. Well, I mean, uh, put a pin in that. Well, my remember, wife, remember to ask me about buttering my wife up. <laughs> <laughs> my wife told I'll me while we were it. while we were on vacation that she had already. Oh, completed she, the survey. I know that's what Christy told me, and I, so I don't think that that helped us. So next week we're going to be we're going to be um, going through all of that data and seeing what we what we're going to learn from our our wives' unfettered feedback, and then we're going to take a three week break, no ear biscuits for three weeks, unless we decide to like re release some old ones just to keep the feed alive. I don't know. I'm 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 soft pitching that. We'll figure that out. Um, I think it's not a bad idea. I, it's a, a lot of podcasts it's a I listen late, to will do it's that. It's a little late to be figuring it out, but at least you'll have something in your feed that maybe you haven't heard before. That's my idea. If we can, if we can get, um, if we can get approval, if we can get, a, <laughs> I approve it. <laughs> well, I don't know what you know. I don't know what Kiko's plate looks like. I don't want to just, um, yeah, because we have to record some like bookends. You know, like oh, this is an episode from two thousand eight, and uh, we didn't have a podcast in 2008. We're in the weeds. But, but so we're doing that. So we're, so we're gonna take a three week break or maybe it won't feel like one to you if we follow through on this thing. But next week, the surveys. Uh, also, latest episode of Ronstadt is out. Man, people people loving Ronstadt. I mean, yeah. as I speak, and I don't know what's gonna happen by the time this comes out, there's a number 11 podcast in all of the United States. The number 11 podcast in all genres. I'd love to be able to say top 10. Well, maybe it's gonna be there. Maybe it'll pop maybe up. Maybe it'll pop up, I don't know. Hey, keep listening. Maybe that Ronstadt scripted, fully immersive, character-driven adventures. In this latest continue. episode, uh, Ronstadt learns a spell, doesn't go too well. That rhymes. Okay, let's get back I've into got, it. I've got a story that I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I wanna tell it, honestly. That's like a I've good been going, place to be. I've going, been going back and forth on something that happened to me. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's the best way to put it, something that happened to me. Uh, I mean, from a different person's perspective, it might have been something that I, something that I did. Uh, and I, I just don't know how it's gonna make me look. So. Since when does that matter? Uh, so I don't know. I, let's see how this conversation goes. There's, there's, I wanna tell you about my trip leading up to that too, okay. but like, I'm sitting here building it up like a teaser, but I, I have not decided. Oh, you're gonna tell it. But if I if I do tell the story, uh, I will say it's not for, you know, if any if any children are listening, they should, uh, you know, m maybe. Prepare to get educated. Prepare, <laughs> prepare to get educated. Okay, don't leave, just prepare to get educated. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel comfortable with that level of warning. Okay. You want me to start? You want me to give you a little bit of yeah. update? Um. Okay, so I mean, you know, it's we're just driving across town to Santa Monica. It doesn't feel like that much of a of a trek, but before we can check into the hotel, we're like we're like, oh, let's go to Abbott Kenny. Let's go full on hipster shopping. Oh yeah, down here, good spot, pre pretty cool street. And I realized that there was a store. I was going into this store, and it was um this the same store that I already had the pants on. Do you ever go in a store and you realize that what you're wearing is probably gonna be on a rack? I don't like that feeling. I feel like the people there just kinda like, I don't know, something about it just doesn't feel right. It's happened a few times in Walmart <laughs> for, for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure I, I mean, these, uh, these underwear are from this place. You know, this was the former, uh, uh, sponsor of Ear Biscuits, Faraday. Fa Faraday, yeah. Faraday. Everywhere, I saw them like, all over the place. I've gotten into their pants, and so not not currently a sponsor, but I was wearing the pants, and I was in the store, and I was like, oh, Christy, see, these are the pants that I'm wearing, and I was kind of self-conscious, I think. And that's why I went ahead and just pointed it out, because I didn't want anyone else to point it out. Are you, are you pointing it out because you think they might think that I you're like walking out with merchandise, like no, you're stealing it's just, it? No, it's just like, it's just like, I'm a, I may, it's, it feels like something an employee should do. He's back, he's desperate, he's already wearing the pants. 
But I'm not happy with the pants because I ordered. Are these them. like those pants that are a little bit short and a little bit wide? They're no, they're they're they look like jeans, but they're stretchy and softer. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm into they, the stretchy they kinda, and soft. They kind of sell it as like it feels like sweatpants. I wouldn't quite go that far, but they are super comfortable, and I didn't take into account the stretch, so. They were, I was wearing them that day for the first time. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you, but I did lie to them. It was my second time, okay? You were trying to return them? And I, and then Christy was like, you're already complaining about the pants being a little too big because they're stretchy. Why don't you just ask them to return them? And I was walking out of the store at this point, and I was like, you know what? You're right, screw it. And I go up there and I'm like, uh, this is kind of an awkward kind of a thing that I'm doing here, but I, you know, I'm wearing, I'm wearing, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm wearing the pants. And oh, we noticed this. We've all been talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> we thought, I was like, could I exchange these for a smaller size? And in they the, were like, in the dressing room. They were like, please. yeah. Set me up in the dressing room. They had two sizes smaller. When I tried those on, I could see the like the bottom line of my underwear. And I'm like, that's too Two tight. sizes smaller? Two sizes smaller. What's getting smaller? The waist? The waist. Huh. And, uh, but then the thighs too. And everything gets smaller when their waist gets smaller, I guess. They didn't have the one size smaller and I was determined, you know what, I need those, but I also tried on some shorts. And then I was like, you know what? You can't I'm, exchange pants for shorts. I'm still gonna itch, exchange the pants for other pants that they can order from me and send to my house and I'm just gonna walk out of here in these shorts that I'm buying. You gotta walk out with some pants. So now I'm wearing, my outfit has changed configurations. I went in the store with pants that were a little too big, I'm walking out with shorts, and they're short shorts. And proportions are off. These shorts are like mid-thigh short, okay? Mm -hmm. You might think I'm wearing swim trunks. Okay. And I'm wearing these, my Lionel shoes, these like super bright white tennis shoes, uh -huh. like no socks. And then I'm wearing a button-up shirt and my jean jacket. And I just started feeling like this is, I mean, I, will, I wouldn't be wearing these shorts out like this. This is not quite my conf, my configuration of confidence. So I start getting in my own, own head about it, and Christy and I are talking about it, and then we make our way back to the hotel, and and um, somebody says something about my hair, and, and it was a compliment, nice hair. Then somebody else, like within 20 minutes, was like, nice hair. But I'm getting in my own head because I'm like, Christy, people are talking about my hair, you know, I, I, I just don't think about myself as being like some guy who looks at, sometimes you and I will talk about it, but I tend to forget that like, oh, look at that guy's hair. And now look at this guy's outfit. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm thinking about this and Christy and I are talking about it and Christy's like trying to characterize what my style is and like we're getting into it and we're going up the elevator to the, um, to the rooftop pool and there's a bar and we were just gonna check it out because we knew that's where we were gonna be the next day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're like looking around and I'm like, I'm looking to see if, I don't know, if just like, do I fit in here? What do people think of me? It's LA, man. You could, I don't know. You could have just, on a banana I usually, hammock and it wouldn't matter. I usually don't get in my own head about this stuff, but I'm like, we had this in-depth conversation. And then I'm like, I'm looking around to see if anybody's dressed like me. And I see this guy across the pool lounging in a thing and he's got on short shorts, tennis shoes, um, like a, sh a shirt and a jean jacket. And the one thing he had I didn't have, I noticed was like he had a yellow bandana wrapped around his neck and I'm like, well, sh I got a bandana in my pocket, I could put that on too. Oh no, and you I'm didn't, like, did you? I, I was thinking about it and I turned to Christy, I'm like, well you know what? Uh, that guy over there is dressed just like me. And then when I looked at him again, I realized it was Harry Styles. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I was like, man, I actually, you know. You stumbled I, into Harry Style. I will be, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I guess I got Harry Style. That dude is a stylish dude. I mean, I. I well, mean, he had the bandana. I'll gladly be the 43 year old version of Harry Styles. And I started to feel a lot better about myself. And I, yeah, that's I validation. Strut, kind of strutted around the pool and did my. I don't, my Mick Jagger. Listen, I don't wanna take any of the air out of your balloon at this point, but I will say that I think that showing up to the pool wearing exactly the same thing as Harry Styles is more embarrassing than wearing the pants <laughs> into the store where you bought them. Well, it's, <laughs> I mean, I didn't go up to him and now, be like, if, nice style. If you were lounging and he showed up, it's whoever's sitting and lounging he first was, he wins. Was the, he, yeah, he was there first. In fact, you should have turned around and left at that point, or at least taken the jacket off. Uh, well, we did. Oh, good. We did leave you at did, that you point did the right because thing. we were just up there looking around. When Harry Styles has planted himself at a place and you are dressed the same, you cannot sit down. You have to leave. 
I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm actually surprised. I was wondering if I he was thought where the story the was going to go. Is I went up to Harry Styles, I was like, "Hey, look at me and look at you, <laughs> <laughs> look at us, look at we." <laughs> it could have happened. I'll tell you, with as much fun as I was having the next day, if he was there, it would have happened. Well, here's but a spoiler alert: he wasn't there. But you know what? Mission accomplished. I just humble bragged about hanging out at the same place as Harry Styles and kind of looking like it. Well, here's the thing, man. I, I, I didn't, you know, we haven't, we we specifically have kept these stories from each other. <laughs> Good uh, looking guy, that Harry. From, uh, from each other so that we could, you know, experience them in person and surprise one another. Yeah. But I, 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 I failed to interject. There's two parallels already happening. The first thing that happened was Jesse and I stayed at two different hotels, one uh, kind of in the Carmel area, and then the second half of the week was down in Big Sur. Clint and Eastwood was the mayor of that town. He was, and I uh, didn't see him at the pool. But, when we checked into the hotel, the bellboy, bellboy, was like, "Cool hair, cool hair." <laughs> yeah, and 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 uh, and Jesse was like, "Now, Jesse was like, that was interesting. I think that's a you know." She was like, "You get complimented quite a bit by gay men on your hair, uh, but that guy seemed like he was straight and complimented you. That's like a you've just leveled up. You just had another straight dude just say he liked your hair." The guy who um, complimented my hair was a was a. Uh, a waiter could have been a bus boy, straight or gay. One of them. Uh, I didn't ask. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, and then the second thing. Uh, that... Do you have a couple of minutes for a few questions? <laughs> because, because I, need I, knew, a, I, I need to, to understand where your lies your compliment. Your compliment. <laughs> um, and then the next thing that happened was we were eating at a restaurant in Big Sur, and uh, a couple walked in and sat down at the table next to us. And I was, and, and, and they had on everyone, you know, this is where we're at right now in California. You walk into the restaurant with your mask on, and then of course you take it off when you sit down. So it's a farce. It's a little bit of, it's kind of theater at this point. But, um, and soon to end, I think. But the, um, I could tell with It's the, a farce for the fully vaccinated. Let me put it to you that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. I could tell with, uh, even with his mask on, I was like, I turned to Jesse and I was like, that's John Hamm. John Hamm. That's Don Draper himself. And in Big Sur, with the woman that he meets in the final episode of Mad Men, in Big Sur, who they now yes. have been dating for a few years. Ho, 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 okay. Redheaded the lady. Fi the, the, the final episode. The, the ultimate episode, the, the series finale, he is at Big Sur with a, with a redheaded woman. Like the Esalon Institute, which is a real place. Which and you're passed. telling me that that scene you saw in real life, because in real life, the, the same redhead actress? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're dating after all this time. They must have fallen in love at the time, but that was a long time ago. Well, no, it was like 2015. When was the last episode of Mad Men? 2015? No clue. And then I think they started dating in 2017, so they made a connection. Oh, you Google all this. Uh, well, of course. And then, um, well, no, Jesse Googled it. Okay. but. Yeah, so it's like they come back to the place where their love was born. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I was in my I was celebrating my twentieth anniversary and seeing you know John Hamm's love for his current girlfriend. I sorry I can't remember her name, <laughs> but uh, she's she's an actress and huh. So anyway, I, but he was not dressed anywhere close to to what I was dressed as. Oh. In fact, Jesse was like interesting. John Hamm is dressed like a dad from Carrie. Um, oh really? Uh, Carrie, North Carolina. Pleated, pleated shorts, well, button up shirt. We were in Big Sur, so we had on a fleece. I think that was ultimately oh. what every, but every every dude was dressed like that. Like it's like you're in Big Sur, you don't dress up. You just got on like some uh, lodge wear, some, some comfortable pants, probably with some stretch and a fleece, which okay. I guess is how Carrie dads are dressing these days. I haven't been keeping up with Carrie dad fashion. Mm. So anyway, I got hair compliments, and I saw famous people too. So I mean, we're even right now. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, we could, we could, we could probably like rank everything and and come out with right, a winner. Well, but let me who's just say that Harry Styles is cooler than John Hamm currently, uh, and you you were dressed like him. So I think you win that. Okay, and yes. you said you got two compliments on your hair. I got one. So you're ahead right now. Yeah, yeah but yeah. this isn't a competition. Uh, we are gonna quickly. I love about, not winning a competition. We're gonna talk about your shirt. We've already talked about the podcast, but you know, there's it's Ron good, Stat merch, and this is a good. It's a good looking. There's some cool ass designs going on here. Look at that. Yeah, that's the phone that Ron Stat uses to uh, that he answers the weird calls. The pink phone. It's got a little nickname uh, Barbie. It's got a little uh, Rolling Stones homage to yep, it. Yep. Right. Yep. 
I love it. It's very cool. So get one. Listen to the podcast and buy the merch. Mythical.com. You're missing out if you're not listening. Okay. Uh, Tell see. me more. So you Big were, sir. Where do I want Excuse to start? Excuse me, sir. Where do I want to start here? Um, well, okay. Jesse had an idea. Um, as I think I've established before on this podcast, uh, neither of us were very happy with our wedding photos um, for multiple reasons. The key reason was the fact that. I mean, you were ugly compared for, to what you look like now. You're right, for some reason, I made a last minute decision to completely shave my face and also to give myself a buzz cut. <laughs> uh, it was like I was going on a like a mission to Mars. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But I was just getting married and I kind of forgot their pictures would be involved. Needless to say, I didn't look too hot and uh, this is universally acknowledged by everyone who's ever seen the pictures. And yeah, yeah. I'll um, acknowledge it again. You were ugly then. I and Jesse, uh, was not happy at all with what the choice that she had made with her hair. Oh. She's always talked about that. But she didn't like a lot of the photos. We, we just didn't know exactly what we wanted and I didn't look right, she didn't like her hair. So for years, again, we kind of built up this 20 year anniversary thing and one of the things that Jesse has talked about, she's like, you know, 20 year anniversary, we'll be in Italy and we'll hire a photographer and take some pictures on the Tuscan countryside. An or Italian photographer. Yeah, and it's, we, won't, he, we won't even be able to communicate. We'd be using just Google Translate the whole time. Or we'd actually we'll just be using the language of love and just following his direction. Anyway, we were in Big Sur, so we had to contact a local photographer there. Oh. And first of all, I mean, this is the most. That dream didn't die. One of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Let me just say that. I love the state of California. Can I just take a moment to do a little PSA? Uh, yeah. Actually, I don't want you to move here because you know, there's too many people here already, but I feel like I'm always finding a new part of this state, which is giant, and uh, I'm always finding a new part of the state and just being like, this is remarkable. I'm like, I am totally fine that I'm basically having to give my firstborn up to the government and taxes because it is worth it. It is worth it. It's whatever I have to pay to live here. It's worth mm. it. It's like a country in and of itself. And yeah. there's so many different landscapes. And Big Sur I mean, no might offense, be the pinnacle. No offense to Texas, but I visited there. And everybody's talking about how they that's where they want to be. It's like I'm they have of, different hey, interests than me. Well, I'm with look, you, man. Hey, listen, move to Austin. I want as many people to move to Austin as possible. I like Austin. For multiple reasons. I like to visit. But mostly because I want the traffic to be less here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, move the traffic to Austin. But anyway. Um, but you got a photographer. Big Sir, let's not forget incredible. about that. So we are both, and I'm thankful for this, 20 years later, we're both happier with the choices that we have made in the way that we now present ourselves, right? Uh, uh, you, I, it goes without speaking yeah. that what I got going on now in the facial speaking. hair and uh, hair region is significantly better than clean shaven and buzzed. But Jesse was like, I know what I wanna wear, and she's like, I'm gonna be in Big Sur and I wanna have a flower crown. A flower crown. I don't know if that's the official name for it, but you know, one of those things that they wore in that I think that's just a midsummer Snapchat movie. Snapchat filter. Uh, well, you those know what? real. The funny thing is, is when, in, in the last minute when she realized that none of the florists were speaking her language and were in a position to make a flower crown, I was like, let's just put a filter on it and give you a flower crown in all the pictures. It was kind of joking, but not. But what she ended up doing is she did a very Jesse thing, which is she just like, we were sitting in a restaurant and she walked out to, she said, I'm gonna figure this flower crown thing out. And when she came back, she had a giant basket of flowers that somebody had given her she for was gonna free. gonna fashion one. And I was like, you're gonna build this thing? She was like, yes. Huh. And uh, I'm gonna show you some pictures. Right. Well, I'm, she built the flower crown. And you, hi you, you hired a photographer? Like yeah, there's like photographers that are in the area that it's, I mean, it's very common to like get married, have anniversaries, oh, 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 oh. and it's one of the most beautiful places in the entire world. Okay. So, so people do photo shoots it's, there. It's kind of like photographers are hanging around, kind of like movers are hanging around Home Depot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get it. And um, like, hey, can I ride in your car to your house and I can help like and, move and, some stuff and for you? And this guy was, uh, at the place we were staying, 
he had done this several times before. Like they were like, oh yes, we know, we know Brandon. He's yeah, he's a regular here for taking photos. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna flip through some of these oh, photos yes, for yes. you. Yes, and uh, you're gonna make fun of me, but I okay, am. I okay. we are we are both. What's what's very happy? Well, very. What's happy. the saying? Uh, I I know my assignment. I knew my assignment. That's what you'll say at the okay, end. Okay. Okay. So we'll start. With, you, you get a good. Okay. You can kind of get it. You get a good idea of. Well, the flower the, crown. Jesse made that flower that's, crown. Well, that is good. You can scroll. You just need scroll to relax. Through, just scroll through. You, you need. To, I'm not a fan of this one, and I, we may not even use this one. But like this is a good look, one. Of you're the looking flower down. Crown. At, are you? You're making sure the flower crown does not like. I'm sniffing the flower crown, making sure it's fresh and not fake. Uh, but you're, flip to the next one. I want. I want to. You want to see some of these. Uh, I want. I also just want to show you some of the scenery. You're going to be blown away. Jesse was ready. It, uh, hopefully, you warmed up. Okay. There was a lot of. What me, was he saying to you? Uh, he was like, "Now, now look at each other. Now hold hands." He was. First of all, let that's, me just tell that, you. That's cute. If you're a photographer, direct the people you're taking pictures oh, God, of, yes. and that's why I so appreciate oh, wow. about Brandon is that he was. He was. He was directing us. Oh, he was. Yeah, he was Good. telling us very. We, I want well, very specifically. It's like you guys are small, because yeah. those trees are huge. Yeah. So you, this, this property is incredible. There's redwoods all over yeah. the place. There's, there's, there's not been a direct shot of you the whole time, which I love. Yeah. It's like right, you yeah. just. Get I try to avoid a, a little bit of you. Shot, yeah. Just a little bit of your face. Okay, there you are. There's your full face. Not into this one. That's not bad though. And these are just it's a the, bit. These are just the previews. I don't know what that face. These is are just saying. the previews that he sent. He took probably like two, three hundred pictures that we. So I haven't even been through. So I don't. I can't guarantee that the ones that Link is currently looking at are the ones that you're going to be seeing. Well, I can just send them from your phone. Oh, look at that! You're walking in a meadow. Look at those trees, man. Those are those are redwoods. Those are like those are tall thousand yeah. year old redwoods right there That's behind cool. us. I mean, you. It really puts you in perspective. You're you're not tall compared That's to a, a good redwood. One. That's a good one right there. It kind of accentuates the height difference. You know, you got Jesse's dimple, very happy. I think she's great. I th I can still tell that you know that your your picture's being taken. You're you you are totally projecting, totally projecting. At this I know point. you need to you need to you just get oh. Okay, now we've got it. See, now you're actually you're in the moment. You're looking I, no, out at this the is, ocean. Hold on, you you are you have a complete. Incorrect assessment of that photo. That is a good photo. Two, a couple, a twenty-year-old, twenty-year-old couple, a forty-three-year-old man and a forty-year-old woman, totally in love after twenty years of marriage. That's how I interpret that. I think that one's great. And then oh, I got oh a, look, there's a picture of barbecue sauce. Yeah, sweet, now we're sweet, talking sweet baby rays. Ooh, that uh, is chi nice. chicken sauce actually. I, chicken sauce. I got some people coming over tonight. I'm making my hot chicken sandwiches Ooh, for them, and uh, I needed Jesse to get I some more. I love that. that. I love the lighting on this one. That is amazing. So look at that. Okay. I can I can tell you meant that. Like look at your hand. So let me get back to the me. blood flow is just increased so, on that thing. Photo shoot. Um, Mission accomplished. To, to commemorate our and and so you know I think what we're going to do with those is poster size, at least thirty to forty of them, and just put them all over our house. Okay. <laughs> All right, God, you have scared you, me for have a you, second. Have you ever been to someone's home and they have a bunch of pictures of like themselves and like yes. like their wedding pictures and things like that? Like we've <sighs> never we've never been into that. Yeah, I told Christy, I was like, you know, it's our house is kind of like an Airbnb. It's like we don't really have pictures of like loved ones up. We have the classic pictures of we the have kids a, a up going up the stairs, like two black and white photos of yeah, the kids from like five that. or six years ago. Uh, I think that might be it. I don't think there's any, it, it, for a long time, because Jesse's parents, and this is funny, ironically, given what, what I just talked about, Jesse's parents got us a giant picture of just Jesse. <laughs> I think that they were very, they understood what I looked like at the wedding. Um, oh, yeah, the uh, her, just a uh, bridal picture of Jesse. We have one of those too. On a giant, really expensive frame. Yes, we It's one of those one things of those. that like, we were like, ah, and we, you know, we, when we were first married, we had it up above it our bed, above our bed too. Yes, they must have talked about this. I mean, it, and now it's under our bed. Like we still have it, but it's in ours a box. is in the attic. It's under our bed. Ours is in the attic, but I think. So we're not going to put these pictures up around the house. I don't think. 
Um, but yeah, I I, uh, I was grateful. I was grateful that at first, because Jesse was like, you don't wanna do this to you. I was like, not really. I mean, like, I I don't really like getting pictures taken of myself. I feel. I also feel like I'm constantly doing it with yeah. the job that we have, yeah. and I never really enjoy it. Um, but I was like, I know that this means a lot to you, and you know, and I do. M- my hair is better than it used to be, so yes, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's good to it's good to memorialize something, and also you just get to remember the uh, how tall the trees were. The, the this space was so beautiful. Like the I gotta go. The the uh, you know, like you said, the mountains coming directly to the ocean. The only and, time I drove through there, it was so foggy that I couldn't see anything. Well, here's the thing: June, which is when we went, the foggiest month of the entire year. You know, the whole June gloom thing that we get down here as well. And they were like, "You guys are getting blessed with this incredible weather because you can see the ocean." And and one of the guys uh, at the hotel was like. I've been here during Junes before where for multiple weeks in a row, I never could see more than about 20 or 30 feet. Yeah. The entire day, it would be completely covered in fog. And so there was a couple of mornings where it was like that where all of a sudden it was like, whoa, I can't see anything and it feels like it's raining because of the fog condensing on the redwoods and falling down all over you. Um, yeah. But yeah, we got great weather. I'm, I'm definitely gonna go, man. We, now, may, we may end up going back, like it could become our anniversary place, I don't know. But I doubt it, you know, there's other places to go. Yeah, there is, man. It's California. Think about all that stuff you just bragged about. Right. Yeah. There's always a new place to find. But Big Sur might be the pinnacle. You know, I, I, I will. Say, I would have loved to have had a week for Christian and I to have, uh, you know, to to get away, and and we'll do that in due time. But I will say, you know, we packed so much fun into just like a couple of nights away that I just, I we were talking, we were sitting. The next day we were sitting by the pool and like you got these like lounge chairs and that's where that's where Harry was on the on the opposite side. But then behind was that, was he in a special section or a just bar. a normal? No, no. It was a then there was a there's like a bar over here, and then there's like these big circular couches, like semicircular couches, and they called them cabanas. And I mean, they would have like a uh, an umbrella over top of it, and then like a little table in the middle. So it wasn't. To me, a cabana is like a, a covered tent like thing that you could and you can lay down and be out of the sun. Right. But this was more of like a couch situation. And but since there were only two of us, we probably could have had two, four, six, eight people, four couples in this thing. But we had reserved the thing for like four hours. Cause, you know, we don't we don't like to be obligated to be in the sun the whole time and we want to be over there and we could have table service. Like it was really mm-hmm. nice. Like we had uh, somebody come take our order and like we were eating and drinking. Man, we were having a good time over there. And um, in, so you're so you're sitting there, and again, I'm kind of thinking like, I'm I'm getting I'm getting getting good at at going to like these highfalutin places and having a good time. This mm. is what I'm telling Christy. I'm like, okay. you know what? I know I was in my head yesterday about what I was wearing right. and do I fit in? But like, you know what? Screw it. Today is my day, this cabana is my cabana, and the world is my oyster, and I'm wearing my like my trucker hat and my sunglasses, my hair is coming out, and I'm like, I got my shirt off and my shoes off, and I'm laying down on this couch. And the, the other people I noticed when I would like go to the bathroom or something, uh, I'm just gonna call them rich bitches, okay? okay. Yeah, right, okay. I'm just gonna, you know, I don't, I don't I mean to offend anybody, I don't think you can but offend a rich bitch. You got these like I think every the, I other think table. They're okay. they're on the every table. other table was just a, you know just a covey of rich bitches mm-hmm. just sitting there um, with their posture, yeah, and their like outfits and their acts up, and they're just talking. They're just talking about you know. At first, I just I was like, I don't know how I got myself into this, but like. I knew I was gonna feel nauseous, but I didn't want to throw up because I think it's part of the process. And like, you know, we made our way all the way out here, and Talking like about ayahuasca. I, I, <laughs> and she's like, "We're and so." But then after a while, I just had to vomit. I just had to vomit. Yeah. And I mean, I just can't even get into what was happening around me. And so it's like, 
all these rich bitches talking about, I don't know, they're like, their peyote excursions and like, uh, right. it was a trip. And meanwhile, and you know, and they're all like prim and proper and put together and with their drinks. And then if anybody who walks by the next booth is like, like basically picture my dad sprawled out at Myrtle Beach. Like that was me and you Christy. And I was like, you dad. know what? We are having a good time. And Christy's like, yeah, you are. Uh, yeah, yeah, you are. You just no, said this she, was your she, cabana. She, she was like, <laughs> I'm she also was like, present. <laughs> she was like, I don't think, I don't think you're supposed to bring your own Lacroix to the table. And I was like, well, I wasn't finished with it. And then she's where'd like, where'd you get the Lacroix from? Uh, from the room, because we had brought our own drinks to the room. Interesting. Um, definitely cold brews. Definitely some Topo Chicos and some Lacroix. I got to have all that stuff. And like late at night, I gotta, I gotta be hydrated. True. Like I drink, I have a Topo Chico by my bed and a LaCroix mm, and a cold weird. brew, that's man. Weird. So yeah, I was bringing one to the poolside because I wasn't finished with it. And she's like, you also didn't have to bring your own music. They are playing music here. You were playing open air music? And like I had one of those like Beats Pill things because their music was, it was quiet and it wasn't good enough. And I and I did walk around I, and I. This is, that was, that's probably They couldn't hear my music at the other booth. I don't the know. rich bitches were not hearing my yacht rock. Well, the more you talk, the more I think you might be the rich bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, we might what? need to flip the script on we, this. We had so much fun. <laughs> like the, the, we were just having the best time. The, the waitress would come up to our table and like Christy would just start talking to her. I guess she was, uh, you know, she had talked to me enough or maybe I talked at her enough. Well, I don't know, I was yeah, like. I'm I, sure. You know how when I have a good time, I get kind of talkative. Yeah. Um, I was gonna read a book, I was gonna listen to some music, I was gonna listen to some podcasts. Like, we just talked the whole, like four hours straight. Hmm. Except when the waitress comes up and then Christy's like talking about uh, Harry and Megan. And I'm like, oh Lord, don't take the bait. The waitress, waitress starts it? Or no, Christy, Christy starts, starts it. it. She's like, are you into this uh, Harry and Megan and you know, their, their new, their new ba baby. <laughs> Are and you I'm into like, it? I'm like, listen, don't, don't get sucked into this. And then she starts talking about Princess Diana and all, I mean, all of this stuff. And like, we're having this like detailed conversation with this woman. And she's the waitress. Back? The waitress is into it because she's serving all these rich bitches who don't even look at you. I'm like, I'll take them. I'll take another. Uh, so and so what and out spritzer. Right, yeah. You know, I, oh, I'll have one of those too. Yeah. And let's go to the bathroom together. You know, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. Were there any men? Uh, No. Huh. Not many men around. Okay, all right. They, they were um, probably all somewhere else. I didn't care. I didn't, I didn't care about seeing other men. I'm After just... seeing Harry, I was good. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm just like, I'm gonna have a good time. And you know what, we're coming back here and we're bringing friends, and we're gonna show everybody how this is done. You'll be invited. Well, the funny, okay, um, again, the parallels are pretty striking. You had a pool? Uh, yeah, there, there was a pool at this hotel. Um, there were actually multiple pools. I mean, Chris and I took pictures of each other. Well, okay, so, you know, we, having not decided to go to Italy, or being not able to go to Italy, we, and this is our 20 year anniversary, we were like, we're gonna splurge. Okay, okay. So uh, this is probably the nicest place we've ever stayed. I would say easily the nicest place we've ever stayed. And so at the at each, every single room is like its own house, essentially, not house, but I mean like we were in like oh, a, like a, a cabin. We were in like a tree, it was literally a tree house. A tr like built in a tree? It was in a up room? in the trees and it had stairs that went to it. So it wasn't like the tree was coming through the middle and like they had put it on posts or whatever, but it was called the tree houses part of the It thing. was elevated amongst trees. Yeah, and it was incredible. Uh, but there were also like some like hobbit house type things that are like built into the side of the slope and have grass growing on top of them. It's just an incredible place. What? Super creative approach to the architecture and everything and the way it all blends in. The whole idea is that it looks like you're just kind of just ascending into the redwoods, right? They thought of everything. And at each end of the, sort of this line of cabins um, is a, what they call a meditation pool, which what us from Harnett County call a big hot tub. 
and uh, a big hot <laughs> yeah. above ground hot and, tub. And uh, it's 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 beautiful though. It's like an infinity edge hot tub. It's like 102 degrees. Oh wow! And on each side of the resort, there are, and and this is a small resort, so there's literally only eight chairs at each pool. Oh, this is a small thing. Oh wow! Right? So there's like four sets of two chairs at each each end, and then there's another pool. That's a bigger pool that's in a different space, but these are the ones that are like right on the edge. So that's where most of the people would go. And again, that was never full. I mean, it was like there was one time where all eight chairs were full. That was the fullest it got. It wasn't like people were coming up and getting turned away. Huh. But there was a moment where okay, when when the pool is that small, when it's just a big hot tub and there's only eight chairs there, there's a choice that is made, which is, are we going to converse with the other people sitting here. Mm-hmm. It's not like a big pool that you you were at where it's like you're kind of just everybody sort of hanging with themselves. It's like I'm kind of right next to this other couple and if we're the there's two couples here, do we start talking and if we start talking, when do we stop talking? Mm, yeah. Does this conversation go on forever? Well, we had had a good conversation with like two other couples and kind of like found out what people did for a living and just kind of connected at one pool, but then the next day we're at this other other side and there was another couple there that was kind of given off that we're keeping to ourselves vibes. And so we were like, well, we're keeping to ourselves as well. I mean, that's what we were gonna do. So yeah. I'm like reading a book, a book that I will recommend at the end of this. And then, um, <laughs> speaking of rich bitches, <laughs> and, I, and I believe that that term can apply to both men and women. Oh, hell yeah. Um, a couple comes in and um, the dude, like, I mean, this is a, everyone's being kind of quiet. It's a quiet, peaceful place. You feel like you're in the woods and it's just like, this dude walks in, he's like, hi guys. Oh <laughs> it's, God. It's all, the way that Jesse described it later is like, he came in like, I'm here now. <laughs> it's like, I am present, you know? And I was like, hey, you know, kind of just gave a little <laughs> bit of a hey. And so like he sits down with his uh, female companion, a wife, girlfriend, partner, whatever, and he they, had a wife, a girlfriend, and a partner? I mean, it's just one woman. Okay. And, they're, and they sit down, and then he's like, oh no, I forgot my sunscreen. And I'm looking at his wife, who is currently applying sunscreen to herself. Oh. And she says, well, just use this. And he's like, I don't use that, it's chemicals. <laughs> he didn't say, <laughs> I, don't, I don't use that, it has chemicals. He said, I don't use that, it's chemicals. Uh-huh which I f- thought was an yeah. interesting choice of words. Yeah, he's a bitch. And I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> when you splurge on a place like this, the clientele. No, I like this, you're, you're, it's chemicals, you're, you're gonna, you're, this is great. You're gonna get some interesting characters. He so, might be a friend, I'm not going. I'm not going. Well, stay tuned, because yeah. the next thing he does is I guess he had just determined that he didn't need his sunscreen. Mm. He walks to the edge of the hot tub at the top of the steps. A, I mean, again, this is a beautiful, I, I've, I've said it already, it's a beautiful spot. It's the most beautiful hot tub I've ever seen. Mm. Infinity edge hot tub, I mean, come on, right? It looks like it goes on 1,200 feet above sea level. You, write it, you get it at the right angle, where it stops, the, the ocean, ocean continues. And then he gets to the edge and before he steps in, he places both hands over his heart mm. and just goes, <sighs> And this is, everyone can see and hear, it's loud. This dude is doing like a cleansing breath. <sighs> like right before he gets into the, the hot tub. This is me, dude. I, 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 I think this is gonna be me. Well, no, I, I hope not because I'm not going to the hotel with you if this is you. The deep breathing? He yes. then steps into the water and I'll admit, the water feels good. And but, they, had ju- they had obviously just arrived at the hotel. Like this is the first thing they're doing. They're getting in, they got in the room, they come to the hot tub. So they're experiencing this all for the first time. I remember my first time. That's not the first thing I do when I get to a new place. And then he steps into the water and all of a sudden he's just like going, ah, this guy was having an orgasmic experience in the hot tub. The hot water was doing things for him. The hot water is never done for me. Oh yeah? Oh, 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 and then he begins to speak French. It was like something about what? exposure to the hot water flipped him into French mode and he began speaking French to his wife who began speaking French back to him. There's a French conversation that happens about, I don't know, I took three years of French but I didn't pick up on any of it but I assume it has to do with how awesome the hot tub was. Okay. Then I know he, the words for green beans and shit. He gets out of the hot tub 
walks back to his wife and begins speaking English again. Oh. So there's something about the hot tub that brings the French out in this man. Um, and I gotta say, as much as I was judging him in the moment, the more I've reflected on it, I'm like, I think this guy's living his best life. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, that's what I'm trying to do, man. Well, and you know what? I had a little. You need lesson. to learn how to do it in not such a pretentious way. Well, so we're sitting here. It at, was a little. There, it was a little imposing. I, I, what I, I, I got an, I got a story that goes just with this, and I think that I judged it one way, and now because of your story and what you just said, I'm seeing it another way. Well, we were sitting at our booth. We're just hanging out. We're we're looking out on the pool, but like there's some things that give us. We have more privacy, except. There's these two chairs that are kind of in front of us in a little table where some people might wait until one of the the big cabanas opens up. And um, this man sits down there, faces away from us, and he's just sitting there. Right. But then all of a sudden, his his wife comes over. Now she could have been French. I never heard them speak. And she sits in the chair across from him, and so she's looking over his shoulders at us, you know, definitely jealous of the good time that we're having. Right. I mean, that's gotta be clear. Um, and then she gets up and comes over and I don't know how else to say it. She, the, the, this, the seat that the guy was in was kind of like it reclined back a little bit, like, you know, at maybe a 30 degree angle. Mm -hmm. It was almost an Adirondack chair. She comes over and mounts him. Like one knee. Straddle? One knee on one side, under his armpit kinda, other knee on the other side, and her feet on the chair. And so she's like, like, like as if he was a squatty potty. Hmm. Like her feet and heels are on the sides of his hips, and then she just like. Rests on him. Lowers down. And then she like. Clothes. So they're fully clothed, right. yeah. But I mean she mounted him. All right. You and then, know happen. and he's kind of on his phone, and she's kind of like kissing his ear and stuff. And Chris is like, "Well, well, well," and I'm like, "Well, I mean, she knows we're here, so I'm just gonna watch." Mm -hmm. And yeah. I was like, and so I just kind of propped up on my left shoulder, and I mean, she's as far from I am from that camera, like where that I mean, what was that six feet? Set, maybe we're maybe even seven feet from each other. Okay, and I'm just I'm just like. Seeing what's gonna happen. Right. But she sees me and then I feel like, okay, this now this is part of it. She's she's mounted him, but she's looking at me and I'm looking at her. Uh -oh. And I'm I'm seeing who's gonna look away first. Or basically I felt like I felt like she shouldn't have been mounted him right in front of me because it's distracted well, me what, from my good time. What, what was the expression on her face and when she what, looked at you? It, it was kind of like, was it was it like kinda, yes, I'm mounting him. It was blank. Would you like to be him? It was blank. It was blank. Okay. So I was like, who I think this is a battle. I'm not gonna look away until don't, she gets until she dismounts. Don't believe it was a battle. That's weird. But okay. Did it work? Um No. <laughs> and in retrospect, you know what? I should have done it totally differently. You should have mounted Christy. I should have just, just kept looking just right mounted, at her. I should have just mounted, no, I just should have mounted Christy or vice versa. Or I should have just been like, that's awesome. It has nothing to do with me. Why am I acting like this is like cramping my style? Like, cause I felt, I felt like I'm like. You're doing a lot of thinking. All the fun that I'm having <laughs> all of a sudden goes out the window. There's a lot of PDA. thinking going on. I need to be doing the PDA and not judging other people's PDA. Or the PDOA as my I got a say. freaking. I just gotta freaking go with it. Yeah. You know? And I gotta like in, I gotta get in the pool and deep breathe and just No, you gotta speak deep French. breathe before you get speak in the French. pool. Speak French. I had another So that's my one regret. I had, is that I, I had animosity towards this this woman. I know you got your story and then I got something after this is gonna be a longer one, guys. Oh, uh but it. quickly I wanna tell another funny interaction that we had. Shout out to the myth mythical beasts that we ran into while hiking. Ah. On a beautiful, beautiful path. Uh, but after Jesse and I did uh, a hike through the Redwoods to like a perch where you could kind of see for miles, we go back down to um, looking for a bathroom and uh, there was like a restaurant and gift shop. You know, everything's kind of in that, is it open, is it not open? But most things are open now in California. So uh, we're approaching 
this gift shop restaurant situation and a woman, middle-aged woman who's alone, comes up to us and she's like, uh, excuse me, are there restrooms in there? And I was like, um, well we haven't been in yet but I, I'm assuming that there's restrooms in there because it's a restaurant and a gift shop. So yeah, I think, I think there's probably restrooms in there. Without saying anything to me, she turns away from me and suddenly into the woods she's like, Ca-ca! What? And then she turns back to me and says, thank you. She spoke crow? Either this woman is traveling with a crow, I don't know if it's a single crow or a pack of crows, I don't know if that's the correct word. Murder. Leader, a murder of crows, or this woman is using crow calls to communicate with her companions, her family, I guess. Um, that beats French, I'll tell you. The funny thing is, is like you're in the, it's one thing to use a crow call like when you are like in the middle of the city or you're in a place where like a crow call is gonna, oh that, yes, yeah, mom doing her crow call. But you're in the woods where there are crows doing crow calls. And this is a really good crow call, it sounded real. Was she dressed like hippie? She was dressed like a mom ready to take on a mountain. Okay. You know what I'm saying? There's there mm. was there was a wide brimmed hat. Oh. Very Okay. Very expensive sunglasses, tank top, cargo shorts maybe, hiking boots. Then what happened next? I just went in and used the bathroom. I think she waited on the crows to show up. I don't know. You didn't even see what I wasn't what, gonna hang what, around what and she see this, like all the children like run out of the woods. You felt you felt sure it was gonna be children. Well, I just thought that she's communicating with her family using That's odd, this, man. this bird language. I mean, the things you experience when people spending way too much money. It's just, <laughs> I think that's what, you know. It's no, like but this was, just, this was at the state park. Oh, oh. This wasn't at the hotel. You, you think kids are allowed at the hotel I stayed at? It's my 20 year anniversary. Oh, yeah. I don't wanna see a child, and if I do, I'm gonna throw them in the ocean. <laughs> it's a long The last call. thing I wanna do is see uh, anyone under 18. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing like a kid that'll ruin a good time. Just keep that in mind if you haven't had any yet. Yeah, I had a woman mounting a man and that somehow ruined my moment. <laughs> yeah, cause, just because, just I mean, because she was thinking about making children. I just the thought know. of the, that couple making children turned you off. I gotta really get work on the PDA. Um, um, don't start with a mount. All right, I think you listen, work your way I, up to a I, mount. I, you know what? We don't have time, I'm not gonna tell the story. Nicole, come on, you're telling the story, man. <laughs> Listen, man, I'm just gonna be, I'm gonna tell it like it happened, okay? And I don't know how it's gonna make me look, but I'm, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm human. And th- I'm just, don't give any I'm being honest. Don't give any disclaimers, just tell your story. And this is what happened. Speak your French, man. Uh, I've told a lot of massage stories on Ear Biscuits. I consider myself a professional massage receiver. Yeah. Like I'm, I can be, I can be the best critic of massages. I'm on record saying I, that could be my next career, a a like a a massage and spa consultant, you somebody might, who comes in. You and might says, need to start a Patreon for that because I don't know if you're going to get paid directly by anyone except your patrons. Um, I know when it's good. I know when it's great. I know when it's bad. I've had them all. Mm-hmm. I thought. Uh oh. But. We were going to this place and they had a spa and yeah, this place is pricey. And I'm like, you know what? We are go- we're going to splurge. Let's get let's get massages here. And then um, Christy was looking into it and she's like, these are pricey massages. This is kind of this is this is going to be the most expensive massages we've ever gotten. Right. And then she told she texted me at work one day and she was like. Uh, I got you an appointment, but they didn't have one for me. I'm on a waiting list. I'm like, well, no, you take it. I, I you know, hmm. I, she's like, you're much more into massages than I am. Um, so I want you to do this. This is part of your birthday, and I'm just, I'm not nearly as into massages as you are. And I knew this was true. So I didn't argue anymore. I was like, you know okay, what? Fine. I will accept this gift. And so we spent all day by the pool. I kept forgetting that I was having the massage and Christy would remind me that like, oh, you can't forget we got this, you gotta be down there for the massage at five. I'm like, oh yeah, massage. (laughs) (laughs) uh, And so I get down there and I did know that this was gonna be unlike any other massage, not just because it's the most expensive, but because this was the first time I was ever going to get a four-handed massage. Oh, wow. Four hands, two people, 
It could have been four hands, four people with one hand tied behind their back. I didn't know. And you didn't care. But I assumed it was two, and okay, so it was, and it was, it was two women. I show up there, you know, um, I'm not weird at a spa. I'm good at this. Like, I mean, with, you can't do all the other spa stuff because of COVID restrictions. Like you can't go in early and like do the hot tub or like chill out somewhere. You're just going, you're, you're going in there, you're going in the room, you're gonna get massaged like at, a, like at a normal place. But like, I know how to like make eye contact and say that, you know, listen to what they're saying about the massage and not be weird. Okay. Definitely not creepy. Like, I'm a pro, and this is a, this is a this is a thing. You sound like you're giving yourself a little bit of a pep talk. I said, it's just <laughs> it's just like you sound like no. you're somebody going to the proctologist. Like he sees buttholes all day. I mean, yeah, this guy's not going to think anything's weird about my butthole. He sees buttholes all day, right? Well, no, she was like, okay. So they start orienting me. This, is, and they said the name of the massage, and they only had like six massages, and they all had like weird names, as if I had been transported to India. Uh huh. Yeah. And and um, she's like, so we're gonna we're gonna start with the treatment called the so and so. And are you fine with getting having oil in your hair? Mm. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm I'm totally good. Yeah, I, I've got cool hair. I was like, I'm totally I mean, good. Two with, guys have told me that. Already. I'm, I'm <laughs> totally. Uh, I'm like, that sounds great. And and then she's like, and uh, we're gonna be putting oil on your body, and then for this, and then for the second treatment, which is called something else that I can't remember or couldn't pronounce, uh, is when we're gonna go into what I knew would be the the drip experience, where they drip hot oil on your forehead. And that's all I knew. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, so um, we'll we'll leave the room. There's a there's a restroom in the room. There's through those doors, it's just your restroom, and then you've got this room here, which is the massage room. We'll step out for you to get undressed. You get completely undressed, and then lay down face down on the table, and take this towel and drape it over your your backside. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, I've done all this before. I'm absolutely like, this is nothing new. And you got to get naked. You got to get naked for. I mean, I, yeah, there, absolutely. Just, I, I just mean, for those of you yes. who are, who are, you know, you're still self conscious about. You got to get completely naked when you, and there, that's what they're expecting you to do when you go get a massage. It's not sexual. It's you just you 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 get naked and then they you're covered in all the right places and that's part of it, right? Don't don't leave your underwear on. No. Um. And you know what? They clear. They even said that. So it was like take it yeah, all off. Yeah. Yeah, and it, yeah. Now there wasn't a sheet like. A lot of places you get under a sheet and then they'll like manipulate the sheet. They just had a towel. Okay. And I would I would call it a hand towel. Okay, that's not real big. It wasn't it was just a hand towel. Mhm. And how big, for hands how big? Uh, <laughs> a normal hand towel. Okay. I'm holding up the dimensions <laughs> for you. You can tell the people what that length is. I don't know. Okay, we're the 16 by 10. Okay, thank you. Um so yeah, they leave. I get dressed. I take a leak because I always get anxious that I'm gonna need to pee during a massage and nothing ruins a massage like having to pee bad. Hmm. Especially if you have to get up in the middle and go pee and like you're, then that's- Have you done that X number of minutes, I've done it once where like I couldn't hold it and then I had to get up in the middle of the damn thing. And (laughs) So I I pee, I get naked, I lay down face down, I put the, I mean the towel, it felt small. I mean I got a little ass, but the towel felt, felt small. And so I draped it sideways and then I wait and I start doing my deep breathing mm-hmm. just to totally get like in a zone Speaking French of, to yourself. of relaxation. Yeah. Je suis Laurent. They knock on the door, I say come in, they come in and um, yeah, I was like wow, four hands, how is this gonna work? And then they start by pouring oil, like copious amounts of oil all over my back, my legs, everything, but before they did that. Two people. Two people. Before they did that, they took the towel that I had two, put. Two women? Two women. And they had put the, you know, I had the, t- the hand towel horizontal across my butt cheeks. So the first thing they did when they walked in was they took the towel and rotated it 90 per- perpendicular, degrees. Perpendicular, yeah. So then it was, it was draped between my legs and then up to the small of my back. Because you need the sides of your glutes exposed. They uh, need access to that. Yeah, so they, so then the, my cheeks were exposed. Yeah. Including the one that like says Christy in a nice crisp t- cursive tattoo. Uh-huh, right. That made me feel better. 
You know, it's like I've definitely got the I've got the label. I'm taken well, again. I'm not. I'm not thinking about it. Any might of, be an old relationship. I, but I'm, I don't ju- know. I'm just thinking. But they're not. They're not thinking hands, about that. Of course, of course not. They're not thinking no, about that. I, I actually wasn't either. All I was thinking was, are four hands better than two? Well, I would think so. And then they're and on six are better than four. They're on each side, and they and I did notice they didn't ask any of the typical questions like, do you have? And there was no forms to fill out. Do you have any injuries? Mm-hmm. What type of pressure do you want? They're gonna find that out with their hands. They they didn't ask me to give them any direction because this was a process. And then they start, like, they're rubbing my feet and it's like, you know, two hands on one foot, two hands on the other foot. I'm like, okay, I get twice as much foot massage in the same amount of time. This is cool. Um, and then they start uh, pouring the oil everywhere, they're like, Pouring, it seems like they're pouring all out of buckets with holes in the bottom, and it's like trickling all over my whole body, and it feels absolutely amazing. I doubt it was a bucket, but and then they're they they start uh, massaging my back, and they held my hand with one hand, and then with the other hand they would massage my back. So one hand they weren't using at this point, and I'm thinking. Just holding your hand? Yeah, just, just comforting just, you. Just to nut, like pushing down on my hand. Just to so know you remember, like, there's two of us. There's two of us here, and each of us is only using one hand going up your back and around your spine. And they did what I would describe as a synchronized hand dance on my back. Well, I would hope so. And it, and I was thinking, you know what? I love really deep pressure. Th- this is nowhere near that. Mm-hmm. This is a totally different thing. This is a this is like a relaxation. This massage. is like a performance. Yeah, this, this is, is Cirque du Soleil. This is almost like it's it's about the two of them coordinating and doing something and proving to me how in sync they can be. Mm-hmm. It's almost like I don't even need to be here. Right. But um, or, but I began to say, okay, I'm disappointed. Maybe I could be disappointed that I'm not getting any pressure, and because but you'd never say that. I like the pain of a massage. There's no pain. It was only, it just felt good, but it was also the fascination that like, they were putting their fingers in between each other's fingers and going up my back and like, and then they would move apart and go up and down my back and it was all completely coordinated. Mm -hmm. So like, and I could tell that one of them was the leader and one of them was the follower, but they were like almost in sync. Mm. And so I was kind of into this as like a show kind of a thing. It was like, um, and then they're like dumping more oil on me and I, I'm, I mean, I'm like, I'm not a slide off this table. Like right. I've never I could be been part of it. inundated with so much and oil. And now you are on the floor. And then, <laughs> it's, and you know, I'm just laying there with my face in the, in the donut and then they start doing this mas- massage that goes from my shoulder in sync all the way down over my butt cheeks. Yeah in my hips and down to my legs and just back and forth. Oh yeah. This was the first point that a thought crossed my mind that. This might be too good. This might be, there might be, there might be an issue here. I was like, (laughs) this might be, yes. Uh, Link might not be ready for this one. This might be The massage reviewer himself, the professional massage receiver may have reached his limit. (laughs) And but it's just a thought. It's yeah, just yeah, a yeah. thought going through my head. It's a tiny thought. And I'm like, breathe deep. So I breathe deep, and I'm like, I'm used to the pain at this point. Like, if 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 those type of thoughts cross my mind in a massage, they immediately go away because I'm in so much pain, uh-huh. which is a form of pleasure to me. Mm-hmm. But it's like it's a therapeutic sport treatment type situation. Yeah, being devoid of any pain. I'm like, this is uncharted territory, right? Um, but it is nice, and so and then the 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 massage up and down my entire body um, turned into like fingernails. Wow, back of the hand, scratching all the way down my body Good in a God. in a light fashion, and I'm like, I feel like we're approaching the flip. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Why, it, why am I telling this? That could be that could be a tricky situation. Why am I telling this? Um, I don't just know. because it happened. You're telling it now. You're, just because you, it happened. You've committed, and we are publishing this again. I'm a, I'm I'm a pro with the flip. I know what's up. It's like they're like, okay, we're going to, um, we need you to slide down 
further down the table and then when your head is on the actual table and not in the donut part, then we want you to roll over face up and. Do they both get on one side during the No, flip? they're on either side and they. That's so tricky. They picked up the towel. Whoa. And they like held the towel and then, um, I didn't really look at them. I don't, I don't look at them. Well, when, but and the then, flip though, I, was the only the, time to look. I, I saw them out of the corner of my eye and they were looking away. You know, it was, it they was. They were looking into the yeah, corner. They were looking into the corner yeah. and they were holding the thing. It was. They're professionals, yeah, they've done this th before. I mean, yeah. They didn't like sneak in <laughs> yeah, this right is... before this started and say, hey, let's do this two-handed thing. So then, so so I roll over and they and they they put the thing back down and then they they take the towel and they rotate it again, vertical, so it's draped in between my legs and then mm. it's going that this way. Okay. Up to the belly butt. Right. And I'm cool. They're 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 starting with the feet, and I'm doing some deep breathing, and it's like this is this is a reset, you know. This is a reset. Whole new side. Nothing. Other side of the burger. Nothing. Yeah, there was. Uh, I was not. I was not saying, doing, or presenting anything that would cause alarm. <laughs> you know. Okay. I was playing it cool. Yeah. And. Um, then they started to, you know, then they're pouring the oil everywhere and like, we're, I'm, it's like I'm going through all the synchronicities and all this stuff is happening again. It's like, this is cool. But then they start doing on the top side what they were, do, what they were doing earlier on the bottom side. They did a few up and downs all the way. And then um, the girl, I, I shouldn't say, the, the, the professional masseuse woman. Right, uh -huh. She wasn't a girl. Right. She was a female. Anyway. She goes, she starts massaging my scalp. Yeah. Both hands, just like full on massaging my scalp. That feels good. Amazing. And I'm like, Where, where's the other woman gonna go? The other professional masseuse. And she goes to my stomach. Okay, this is new. And I'm like, first of all, I never, I'm, maybe once ever have I had anybody massage my stomach and I think I was like. I'd be laughing at this point. I it was like, too ticklish for that. It was not ticklish because there was so much oil. Okay, barely even Copious. And she's like, she's like rubbing my belly and then rubbing up my chest. And <sighs> I, I mean, I really felt like I was in some Game of Thrones scene. Yeah. So some like. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> something, it's like. There's like a like a medieval like people rubbing on you type situation. I mean, this is I I I was blindsided. Mm -hmm. I I, mm -hmm. I mean, I got in a preview uh, face down, but now here I am, mm. and I'm just breathing deep, and I'm like, you know what? I I I'm gonna I'm gonna be cool with this. Oh. I'm gonna be cool. It might be the wrong thing to think at this point. I'm just gonna breathe deep. And I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just experiencing this, 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 the most expensive professional massage I've ever had in my life. Yeah, and think I'm, about the price. Think about I'm how like, much you're spending. <laughs> and I'm like, well, and I'm like, I, I am thinking things like, okay, th there's a central component to this, but I know that this is a totally legit spot. You know, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. professional. There's, there's no chance of any mm -hmm. hanky panky situation happening right, here. Right, 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 like, right, right. I knew that that was not going to happen. Correct. I and I took comfort in that. Mm -hmm. We are all professionals here. Right. I'm is, the professional receiver. Yeah. Is You're the what professional I'm givers. And, but then they both got on either side of me, and they started at the top, and they did the rub, the rub, rub down across the hips all the way down to the bottom, and then it they started with the fingernails. Uh. I mean like, and, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> at, the, at this point, I, I well, and by the way, the entire time that I am I flipped over, I have a blindfold on. I, be, I, have, I have a napkin or a towel or whatever you wanna call it, draped over my face, I was blindfolded. Okay. The whole, for this whole thing. Right. And, at that point, I definitely, I could tell that like, something had moved the towel. <laughs> oh my God. Oh no. I mean, I just. And it wasn't one of them. <laughs> it wasn't one of them. It, it, it was, of the six hands 
that were involved gosh. in this professional exchange. Oh my gosh. No hands moved the towel. Right, yeah, it was almost like magic, you might say. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it wasn't, it wasn't like a, like the towel was tossed off the table or anything. Yeah, right. Or that the towel, like. It, it wasn't a tenting situation. It, <laughs> <laughs> it was no, it wasn't a tenting situation. It was a sh it was like a shifting yeah, situation. Yeah, just a slight shift. Yeah, totally normal. And at this point, <laughs> and I'm I'm just like, I was petrified. Well, yeah, oh. literally. Oh man, I'm, I'm I'm sweating. Yeah, I don't know why you're telling this. I but I'm glad you are. But listen, this. <laughs> well. Um, yeah. yeah, I was, uh, I guess petrified is the best word, but I mean, I was, I would say I was, I was half petrified. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Uh, I get it, yeah. It's just a natural cycle. And I didn't, you know. It just happens. I, I, I panicked and I was like. I need to flip back over. <laughs> <laughs> is there another flip? But, but I just, what I, what I did in that, in that moment, what I decided to do was just play it cool and just breathe through it. Mm. I was breathing that loudly at this point. Like I was like, I hadn't been doing that and like all of a sudden I'm like, oh, just like, I like that guy entering the spa, the French dude. Right. And like, I could tell that like their hands stopped and then they, they both went to the feet. Oh, they know about this. They had some training. Yeah, move to the feet. And I was like, okay, brilliant. We're still all on the same page here. This is just, we're gonna all play this cool. So you think they uh, they, they were responding to you? Definitely? It was in a, it, I, I, I wouldn't call it abrupt, but for like the professional methodical movements of a masseuse, it was an abrupt change in, in, uh, in location from being at the sides of the hip to being down, both down at the feet. Cause this has to be a very common occurrence. And so let me just tell you what happened at that point. So then there was like, um, there was like 10 minutes more of massage. It wasn't over. It wasn't like up, uh, excuse me. It wasn't like a siren uh, went right, off yeah. and they opened the door and they kicked my ass out. Give them a refund. <laughs> uh, it was professional and, and, and gracious redirection of attention. And then when that, when that was winding to a close, um, she came up to my ear. Again, I'm still blindfolded and she was like, Link, before we, before we go to the next part of the treatment, um, would you like to use the restroom? And I, yeah, your eyes are getting huge right now. Under the blindfold, my eyes got huge, and I was like, "What is this? Just procedure, or is this? I, is this a special accommodation? Are there some expectations that now I'm supposed to meet?" My mind is is going m like a hundred miles an hour, and I'm like, "I, I, I could hear myself like." trying to form words. I was like, uh, no, I'm fine. And by that but point, I don't I understand was the question. Well, it was it was an hour and a half the whole thing. And yeah, potentially anyone at a it was a break in the You think process. this question I think this question is asked to everyone. I don't think that I mean because I don't But understand. I definitely I, I interpret it as do you need to take care of anything yourself? What's going to the restroom gonna do? Well you, you know, just have some privacy to, I don't, you know, just okay. to, I don't know, blue balls, man. <laughs> but I, felt, I, 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 had, I had fully recovered at that point. Yeah, I think I this is- I fully recovered. I think this is just a, so I was, a it's question just procedure. everybody. Just yeah. procedure, but I'm, I was reading way into it. I don't even think even noticed anything. And it yeah. had a second, well, that's an insult. <laughs> 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 then we moved to the, so then it turns out they had a good number of stuff to set up while I was like just laying there and like meditating. And then they just bring out this, again I was, I had the thing over my eyes, but they they brought this thing and they started dripping oil on my on the center of my forehead. The drip part. And sometimes they would move it to one side or the other and it was at least 30 minutes of just oil, yes, just oil dripping oh, on my forehead. That's why they asked you to use the bathroom. Because once you start dripping on somebody, and it was very, you, it, makes you pee. it was very meditative, and it was really cool because like, whenever your mind would wander, you could recenter by focusing on the fact that like, 
oil was being drilled into your head like, I guess like water torture, but in a good way. Mm, good so that was torture. cool and then when that was over we were, you know, we, we were on speaking terms and. On speaking terms. It was, uh, it was fine but like, uh, I get back to the room and we had like 20 minutes before our dinner reservation so I'm like getting ready very fast. I'm like, but I could not wait to tell Christy what had happened. Okay, well, well she, uh, yeah, so she already um, knows this. She's not finding out now. <laughs> I, there's no way in hell I'd be telling this story if I hadn't told her first. But like, I was just like, I don't know what happened to me. I have to tell you about this. We have to process this. And like, we're sitting in the lobby waiting for our table and like, I tell her the whole story and she's like Googling like, erection while, um, Getting a massage is totally common, and sometimes you just can't control it, and it happens. And I will say that I, I you know, I didn't, I didn't have a. F I, I understand. Okay, you, you've you've been clear. There was okay. not a tenting situation. Okay, yes. This was a. This was just a, a slight. But she, she was changing things. She thought it was hilarious, but she was also super sweet and like like reassuring me that like I'm not a I'm not a freak or a creep. Well, I could have told you that. You didn't have to look that up on Google, man. Listen. Oh, I didn't look it up on Google. I didn't want that to be in my this history. Is, just think about it for a second. You're being, it's not, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, you're, you're, it, being, know, you're no, being touched. It doesn't mean anything. And you're naked. Yeah, I'm totally fine with it. I have no shame associated it's with it. It's a common thing. At they, this see, point, they see this. Yeah. This was like the fourth one of the day. The one thing, especially seen. with that particular massage. Right, of course. Um. The one thing that we did read was that like, you know, you can say something that's like, a, that acknowledges what you're going through and not apologize, but like acknowledge, like, and it might sound kind of like an apology, but you definitely don't wanna say anything that's like, you, it can be self-deprecating, but it can't be something that could be misconstrued as flirtatious. Like, oh, I guess, I guess you made him happy. You know, it's like, that's obviously that's what the website say you never say. I didn't say anything, and I would never say anything like that. But that is what what Christy and I were. That's what she was reading to me was like, you know what? You could have just what the, their advice is just to acknowledge it and then move on. And you might say, or you might suggest, I'm sorry, I could go. You know, I might need some more. I might need to flip back over or something. You know, it's like, Not like there, you got a lot to think about. It isn't a. <laughs> in a it's an. It's an embodiment. Uh, exercise to say, you know what, these things happen, and it doesn't have. I mean, and there's a there's a right way to deal with it, and a professional and appropriate way to deal with it. That there shouldn't be shame involved in it, and that's actually why I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna tell this story because it's it's hilarious to go through, but it's also it's just a thing that it's Hap a thing that is happens to the best of us. Um, well, I've got one more story. That's a pretty wild shift in uh, tone. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, but why not? Since Let, we've already, since we've already, uh, let's do it. We've already tinted uh, or semi tinted. Um, the uh, so one of the things that uh, we decided to do. There was a lot of different activities, a lot of things you could sign up for, and one of the things that Jesse and I decided to do on our final day was a forest meditation. Right? Oh yeah. And uh, there's a part of me that was like, we're in Big Sur, let's just do, let's do the weird stuff, right? And I mean, obviously I, I, I meditate regularly and like a forest meditation is not something that's like, you know, 10 years ago it would have been like, oh, this is real dumb and I'm just gonna do it for fun. And now it's like, I'm, I'm going into it with an expectation of like, this could be really cool and you know. Yeah, um, four-handed forest massage, right. I mean uh, meditation. But uh, I, I wanna, you know, I wanna talk a little bit about a, sort of a realization and sort of something I'm grateful for that kind of came out of this process. So forest meditation is kind of probably what you might be imagining it is. There was, it was just two couples. It was us and another couple and then this woman who was leading the meditation and she kind of takes you through the path through the forest and you like pick a leaf and she's like, I'll take this leaf of this bay leaf off of this thing and kind of crush it in your hands and smell it. And then she's like, let's meditate on that. And then you kind of walk into this place where there's the redwood grove and she begins to talk about the nature of the way redwoods grow. Um, hmm. where there's like a grandmother tree, they call it in the middle, and then there's a concent there's concentric circles of younger trees. Yeah. Just the way they grow, and they're all connected through their roots, and they're connected to other trees through their roots that are they're all supporting one another. That's how they kind of stand up, because 
the roots grow very horizontally because of the way the bedrock is in places where redwoods grow. And so they're literally holding each other up and they're also sending nutrients to one another. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know, cool tree stuff. And there was some, I mean, so she was kind of giving some nature information, but then there would also be like, all right, we're gonna close our eyes and we're gonna like, we're sort of leading a meditation. And I'm sure you can relate to this, uh, but one of the things that is sort of a constant for me at this point in my life is that, you know, having grown up as, you know, in the South, in a conservative Christian place, as a conservative Christian, as an evangelical Christian, and not being that now, there's always that sort of the old ret that's kind of present in my mind that when I'm experiencing something that's very typical sort of California new age forest yeah. meditation, yeah. the old ret is kind of like there um, sort of judging and kind of ma almost making fun of the new rat that is experiencing this thing that the old rat would have just laughed at and thought was ridiculous, right? Yeah. Like this is yeah. so funny that you're doing this forest meditation. This is kinda dumb. I mean, it's just a tree, man, right? right. Yeah. And that voice gets quieter and quieter all the time, but in, uh, but it's good. I, I, and there's a part of me that's thankful for, for, for that voice because I don't know, it kind of represents an evolution and kind of where I come from. Um, but as Jesse and I kind of finished the forest meditation, we were and we were kind of walking around. And we started talking, and I was like, you know, it's interesting that because we've just spent a lot of time reflecting on twenty years of marriage and the fact that we have been through these this, these transitions through our life of both getting married under a certain understanding of the way the world works and understanding about what marriage is about and what a man is and what a woman is and how that has evolved over time to where mm -hmm. we're at now, and. I was thinking about the way that I, the old me, would process time in nature or nature in general, right? And of course, the background that I come from, sort of a biblical literalism, and that's probably an oversimplification, but essentially the idea that evolution wasn't true, right? That humans were a special creation in a separate creation from all of the rest of creation. We were not related to any of the animals or any of the plants other than the, fa the fact that we were both creations of God. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, humans were created to have dominion over nature and to subdue nature. We're fundamentally different and, we, and nature was kind of created for the glory of God but also for the glory of man, for man to subdue, to exercise dominion over and kind of control, right? And it's funny because this woman was talking about how there are so few redwoods left compared to their original footprint. And that's due to man subduing the earth, literally cutting down billions of these trees. Yeah. Like there was a map that showed like the original footprint of the redwoods and now what's left. And it's just a very, very small fraction. Logging, you know, is one of the big things. You see this thousand year old giant tree and you're like, you see, you know, 50 houses that you could build with that or whatever. And that's what man has been doing for a long yeah. time. And then of course, more recently with continuing to pull all the fossil fuels out of the earth and burn them and climate change is happening and that's only further bringing about conditions that are gonna make the redwoods difficult to to live through. So there will probably, be, probably at some point be the last redwood because of the way humans are subduing the earth, right? It sounds like your meditation was an existential crisis. Well, it wasn't a crisis and I'm gonna get to why I'm thankful and, gr and grateful and I was like, man, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm grateful. I'm very grateful that I believe in evolution. I'll just be to, to be frank, right? Because of the the, not only do am I grateful because I think now that you know now that I understand what it is. For many years, I was arguing against something that I didn't fully understand. I, it was a misrepresentation of what the facts were about this. And it's not just cool that I'm like, okay, I believe a, something that is a more correct understanding of the way the world works, that's cool, but it's actually there's a deeper and more significant truth to it all and my literal relationship to these trees, right? We're from the same stuff and not, hmm. like we're literally related, not just related because we're all from God, but we're re literally related, we come from the same place. And of course, even more so with the animals, right? 
But there was just something about that connection that I was like, it's just cool that there's this evolution that has happened over the course of millennia, but then there's also this personal evolution that has happened inside inside of me. And then I'm thinking, and I'm experiencing all this in my 20 year anniversary with Jesse, who has also gone through this evolution. There's the different versions of, of Jesse and the different versions of, of me that have kind of gone through all these stages. Yeah. <sighs> And also it I mean this is this is kind of wild but Jesse and I were talking about because I think that the evolution has been really significant for me but it's been even more significant for Jesse because of what um because of the way she sees herself differently as a woman mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. because you think about the early the, the beginning of our marriage where the understanding was you know, we read that passage from Ephesians at our wedding like many Christians do. That's basically about wives submitting to your husbands, right? And 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 there's this this idea in a certain brand of, of Christianity that w- that women exist for the glory of men, right? And that God is the head of the family, but the man is the head of the household and the woman's primary role is to support and help her husband. She's to be quiet in church, she's to, she's not to teach, she's to listen. And when you're a woman there's who- There's things that men, that women can't do that men can do, and there's things that men don't wanna do. That's <laughs> kinda what it seems like. Well, but the interesting thing is, is like, Jesse is really, there's, there, this is this this sort of turning upside down of her worldview. It, for, for me, as a straight white dude, mm-hmm. who is yeah. already pretty well positioned within the church, it's right. like, I don't feel, I, there's not like a sudden empowerment that has happened by by leaving the church, I was already pretty empowered, right? Yeah, I experienced freedom, but I, I haven't experienced more empowerment because right. of, uh, that was a pretty sweet gig. But the idea that, and not to get too like professorial or talk about history or whatever, but this idea that, went, you know, what I once thought was an idea that was from God and was from God's word, and that's why it was important, and it was like, well, women fulfilling this role and men fulfilling this role is a good thing because this is God's plan, this is how he designed it. And now seeing it as, no, actually the reason that this is the way that this is presented in the Bible is because of the history of humanity and the way our culture has evolved. You know, pre-agriculture, when, when, when you know, uh, basically before the concept of ownership, right? There was a point in human history where ownership and owning land didn't exist, but when agriculture came around, the concept of ownership came along with it in order for it to function and women unfortunately got wrapped up in this concept of ownership and they were literally owned. And they've been trying to break out of that patriarchal view of things for a really long time and there's still a lot of residual effects and it's more, it's still more prevalent in certain parts of the world but to see Jesse kind of come to these realizations that uh, and, and in the context of this conversation of like seeing what that m- sort of masculine subduing of the earth, of ripping the trees up and drilling for the oil and burning the f- gas and all that stuff <laughs> to see what it's done to the earth. Yeah. Uh, and what it's done to women, right? And then to see I mean, Jesse did a good good job talking about this on her her Twitter account, of course, <laughs> because this is she she does a good job of uh, uh, putting this into words. So she did a better job than me. So you should you can go to her you can go to her Twitter account and see how she has kind of been processing this. But um, ultimately, what I'm trying to say is that I was very grateful uh, for uh, for her sake of her having honestly gotten out of that way of thinking about herself. Mm, yeah. Um, and to just, I mean, and it's, it's, been a, it's been a long process. But it's great to love somebody and then see them become more of themselves, to have that, to have that freedom and to, to have that empowerment. And it's like, I'm, I'm, you know, it's like, I'm sure she's, I'm sure she loves you for being so supportive and, and, and welcoming that because you certainly don't have to, that doesn't have to be your response. I mean, it's just the story of both of our 
marriages and yeah. relationships is that like we've changed so much and um, we've asked so much of our wives at every turn. Yeah. And even even not within the worldview stuff, but within the career stuff and all that. It's yeah. like so it's it's nice better late than never. It's it's kinda how I feel about it a lot of times whenever like Christian and I engage in this is Well, because like, sometimes you can start thinking about well, what do we miss? And, right, and, right. And I and I I want to be you, clear. But you have this beautiful moment where she's able to uh to be empowered. Yeah, and I want to be clear that like I don't I know that if when I talk about this stuff, if you're you know you still consider yourself a Christian or that you you subscribe to like a biblical worldview, you're like, oh, he just thinks he's better than us and now, and it's like, no, not that's not that's not what I think, you know. It's like that's where I come from. That's what I believed with all my heart at one point. I didn't believe it because I was a bad person. I didn't believe it because I was a bigot. I didn't believe it because I was stupid. Uh, I believed it because it was what, what what I was taught. Um, but in the same way that I, I think that there is a, a there is this valuing of sort of stasis and consistency. You know, you've got and and, and from a Christian worldview, one of the attributes of God is this immutability of God. God does not change at all, and that's something that we really value in God. And so we, the translation or the implication is that that should be true of people. You know, and change change is not great. You want to you want you want to establish your principles, and you want to stick to them, and you want to stay the same. But we live in the context of this evolution that has happened over the the entire universe. No, the universe doesn't make sense without the process of evolution. I'm not just talking about evolution that's taking place on this earth. I'm talking about the principle of evolution of of the universe unfolding mm -hmm. and changing over the course of time. It is a fundamental principle of the way the world works and when you can kind of get in tune with that, when you can kind of st st appreciate it, step in line with it and be like, that process of things unfolding and things changing is something that's happening in individuals as well and it's something that's awesome. It's, it's awesome to witness in somebody that, that you love and it's awesome to experience personally. And so it's not that I'm trying to judge people who are in a different place, I'm just saying I'm grateful that there's been not there's been an evolution in our lives, and that Jesse and I have been able to be walking side by side through it. Of course, next week may erase all of this if because they <laughs> may, they filled out she filled out her survey before your meditation, so you might right you might want to give her a call before we yeah that's next week. We go through the answers that they gave to the survey that they were given. Yeah, it's it's great to be married for twenty twenty one years and to like. To to have such meaningful experiences that are just focused on our you know me and Christy or you and Jesse and then you have those things that you take away and like how you spend that time together and you have this you're deeply impacted by it is just that says so much about your relationship mm -hmm. and for Christy and I it's like we were just talking about like we had as much fun like that day by the pool as we've ever had in our marriage. Like we were, t you know, it's just, it, and our whole time there, you know, it was just like, I'm so grateful that we that we enjoy each other as much as we ever have, and just kind of had that feeling of like it's only flashbacks better. to newly being newlyweds in terms of the excitement of being together, and then like, but then the payoff of of uh, knowing each other, yeah, so deep. That's what Jesse, so Jesse and I said that our 20 year trip, the the week of our 20 year trip, was significantly better than our honeymoon. Oh God. So much oh, better. God. Yeah. It's, Not it's, even it's, it was such a it's such a reward. Because, yeah. I mean it, you know that's it's the payoff for all all the work yeah. that they put in sticking with us. Okay, before we wrap up, I do have a relevant uh uh recommendation. It's a book that I read uh while I was on vacation. Um How to Not Get a Boner. Oh I'm sorry that's it's called The Overstory by Richard Powers. And I will say that I was gonna recommend this before I heard Barack Obama recommend it on Ezra Klein's podcast. Okay, oh, so I'm not trying to just be like Obama here. You talking about Dick Powers? Dick Powers. Dick uh, Power. Uh, Richard Powers wrote this. Uh, it, was, it won the Pulitzer Prize. It's the New York Times bestseller, but it's essentially, speaking of trees, it was just, I just happened to pick this up at a bookstore in Big Sur, but it is essentially a collection of stories that center around 
trees and people's in individual or family sort of interactions with trees. Like there's a tree that is a, and usually a different species of tree that is a central element of this like short story in a collection that's kind of, huh? and it sounds weird and it's so innovative and it is a little bit weird and innovative. Is it uh, new? Uh, it's relatively new. I don't wanna know oh, okay. when this thing was written, not too long ago, that's but cool. uh, 2018. Uh, I highly recommend it, The Overstory. Hmm. Uh, by Richard Powers. All right. We'll speak at you next week, you rich bitches. <laughs> to watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.